Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Canada Today. And today we are going to highlight another Muslim change maker on Canada Today being broadcast on Muslim Network TV. This is your host, Taha Ghayur. And on, as you may have noticed and, and watched over the last few weeks, we have been highlighting uh, every week uh, a wonderful, accomplished, bright, brilliant uh, Muslim change maker who wants to make a difference in the world using their intelligence, using their resources, using their grit and hard work. Today, we have a guest who has just done that over the last few years and has accomplished quite a bit. And we're going to hear more about her uh, over the next few minutes. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have a, a student, uh, a PhD student, uh, who, uh, who is a student uh, still at University of Ottawa, uh, who is also an inventor. So I wanted to invite and welcome Azade Dasmalchi, um, who is a co-founder and a CEO of Viral Tracer, a company responsible for producing a, a groundbreaking technology um, which is a smartwatch that records a person's blood pressure, body temperature, and various other measures related to the heart. So she has been working on this idea or this concept uh, of a cuffless blood pressure measurements measurement for about 12 years. She is also an entrepreneur, a critical thinker, a decision maker, and a problem solver who seeks to make the world a better place to live. Azade joins us as a PhD candidate from the University of Toronto, uh, University of Ottawa, um, and a Master's of Science and a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering. Um, she's joining us from Montreal, Quebec today. We'll speak more, uh, speak to her more about her invention and uh, that she has co-founded recently. So welcome to the show, Azade. Thank you for having me today. Welcome, Salam. Thank you for being here with us. Um, when you started out, uh, you were essentially seeking to uh, develop a user-friendly blood pressure test um, that resulted in this visionary, uh, you know, invention. Um, I wanted to hear a little bit about uh, first about the product itself. Those of us and are our, our, in our community who may not be aware of what this is about, Viral Tracer product that you and your uh, co-founder have recently launched. So help us understand what is this technology and what does it do? Uh, so Viral Tracer is a medical smartwatch which is measuring all human vital signs through the wrist using optical sensors and uh, AI algorithm. So it's basically something like a Fitbit and Apple, but it has a more features and it's as a medical device. It's mm -hmm. also have a different target market. So it's more for elderly people with chronic disease like hypertension, and we can customize our cloud for senior homes and hospitals. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Um, so you, you, uh, you know, I, I like let's before we get into your, the sort of journey, how you got there um, and, and, you know, your life journey itself. I wanted to hear a little bit about um, how you came to that realization that you need to have a, a product like this and that there's a gap out there and you felt a need for something like this, this idea. So how did this idea even come up to you when you, you know, first decided to go for this? So the idea started in 2010 when I uh, decided to start my uh, master at University of Ottawa. At the same time, my dad was diagnosed with the hypertension or high blood pressure. So his medical doctor asked him to take his blood pressure every day, at least three times per day, uh, write it down, record it, and bring it to next time with uh, his appointment, and also take his pills every day. <laughs> But he forgot to do it all the time. And uh, when I asked him about what's the main issue between uh, using a device, 
usually I'll say that it has a cuff and it's hard to install. I don't know how to use it. And when it's inflate, so it's push arm too much. So it's painful at the same time as well. Mm. So I find it like not that much user friendly and it's not easy to using. And it's also the cuff hurting. And at the same time, I started my master, so I decided to working to make it a cuffless blood pressure. And then I started reading all the papers to see the, what is um, the issues and how can I solve a part of those issues. Amazing! It's interesting that you know how uh, you know the story of your own uh, experience with your father and uh, led to something like uh, this idea and a solution that you thought of over 10 years ago. Um, and congratulations, uh, you and your Viral Tracer, Vital Tracer co-founder just received the MyTech Social Entrepreneur Award and Esteem Award for the state-of-the-art smartwatch. So it's amazing and it's amazing achievement. Um, and uh, I know you're, mashallah, a mother as well, and your co-founder is a mother as well. So you do juggling so many things here. Um, so this specific res uh, recognition is uh, given to you for your creativity and ingenuity, uh, but also because people realize the uh, how versatile uh, and practical your tool is that you produce. Um, so, uh, and specifically as we are hearing, uh, and we'll hear more about in a minute, uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, you know, this is uh, also a technology now that is becoming useful um, during COVID-19. So when you designed this, you know, back 10 years ago, or even five years ago or three years ago, did you ever think that your device could be and your invention could be um, of benefit uh, during the pandemic? No, of course, no one can predict that the pandemic is going to be happening. It's a very uh, game changer or life changer or both. Uh, we didn't expect to be that much useful for worldwide. We always dream to make a world a better place, but it was like God willing and mm -hmm. uh, at the same time luck. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah, so for COVID-19, it's more for patient tracking, or if any abnormality happening, it can we, we it can detect the abnormality and alarm to healthcare provider or caregiver. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we didn't uh, definitely plan for COVID or any mm -hmm. pandemic uh, disease. We didn't expect it, but it was uh, good for our uh, company. What a timing, uh, subhanAllah, it's amazing. Um, and uh, definitely something that will be appreciated by many, um, you know, who, especially among seniors, as you mentioned, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, um, uh, you know, in a few minutes about its utility, especially during the COVID-19 phase uh, or pandemic. Uh, now, this, this particular device has been recognized uh, more so because of the biosignals that are integrated uh, that, you know, are able to pick up body uh, processes, all sorts of bodily processes. Um, and uh, and you do mention uh, in some other interviews out there that it's, it's kind of like Apple uh, Watch or Fitbit, yet it is different because it does more. So tell us uh, what what is it that makes it stand out and uh, what's it, what makes it, you know, uh, a, something that is more of a medical use device rather than just simply a nice smart watch to have. Yeah, so uh, one of our main value proposition is measuring the blood pressure without using a cough and by optical sensor and AI. So right now Fitbit and uh, Fitbit and uh, iWatch and other wearable does not have or claim that they can measure a blood pressure accurately. Uh, however, our, um, the, we are in the phase of validation, which is running our uh, clinical trial. So we will bring the watch to the ICU to compare the accuracy of the result with uh, the with, uh, gold standard, which is uh, all medical device uh, location in ICU. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Very interesting. And um, so let's go back a little bit. Um, 
you know, just maybe say 10 years ago when you started working on this, uh, this idea, uh, what were some of the struggles you went through? I mean, 10 years of research and, and commitment to invention, of course, in a grand scheme of things may not be a big deal, but, you know, you starting out uh, being a young uh, Muslim girl immigrant to Canada, uh, you know, dedicating for 10 years of your life to this research. And, uh, you know, what were some major challenges you faced and how you overcame some of those challenges? Are you, are you able to hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, uh, what was your last question? It was disconnected. Uh, oh, sorry about that. So, yes, so, so I was just curious about your, you know, 10 years of struggle uh, with this whole process of research. Um, and, you know, what, what, what were some of the key uh, obstacles you had to overcome and some critical challenges during your 10 years of research oh, that you did? Yeah, the, the main the main uh, challenge was at the beginning when I started, no one's believed that this is going to be happening. In mm. 2010, it was uh, too early to talk about using an optical sensor and AI algorithm to able to accurately measure blood pressure. Even like a professor, different professor or supervisors at the University of Ottawa or other university could also hardly believe that's going to be possible. But luckily, I asked them to just um, supervise me and um, don't pay me. I'm going to pay everything, even my tuition from my own pocket, and I'm going to make it happen. And um, at the, at the, when I defend my master, then my supervisor asked me to stay and continue for PhD. But uh, that was the biggest challenge that I tried to convince lots of people that this is going to be happening. This is going to be uh, like answer correctly and we could do it, but no one's believed, especially big guys in medical area and hypertension uh, experts. But uh, we made it. I just try to say that it's it is possible. That's incredible. That's a beautiful story. And so do you think part of, uh, I guess, this struggle of making people believe in you uh, had to do with the fact that you are perhaps female, perhaps you are Muslim, uh, you know, an observing Muslim, uh, or you're, you know, maybe the fact that you're just too new to this field. Do you think any of this had to do with, with uh, any of the factors that you mentioned? Uh, in a part of my master research, is not that much because um, my bachelor was also biomedical engineering. So I, I came with a, a very strong Uh, I think so uh, my bachelor was also biomedical engineering, and I come with a very strong uh, background. And I entered mm -hmm. to the business area, and I try to convince uh, end area, which is um, anti. -fem can you hear me properly? Yes, I, I can. There's a bit of a choppiness. There's some chop. Sorry, there. can you hear me I properly? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. It's a bit choppy, but we can hear you. Yeah. I think we are having some, you are having some connectivity issues. Seems that we're not able to hear us. So, um, so in this sense, it was different. Okay, I so I think we. Now. I can hear you. you change. Um, yeah, we, we are we are having a very hard time. Your screen is frozen, unfortunately. Um, 
let's see if we can get you back on uh, again. Um, probably you're going to have to reconnect. So let us wait um, uh, for a few more minutes for uh, Azad to join back. Uh, it seems we are, she's having some tr uh, trouble with her uh, Wi-Fi maybe or some other problems. So we're gonna wait until her connectivity is resolved for the next couple of minutes, hopefully. My wife, who uh, she's a professor at the University of Cincinnati, who, who's Catholic, and by her watching and listening to our three-year-old son uh, watch Adam's World, she ended up taking Kalima Shahada. She embraced Islam because she learned so much about Islam and the other prophets. It really affected our life in a great way, and because of uh, Sound Vision and Adam's World, we're Muslims. I took my Shahada 15 years ago, and I actually am from a rural part of Ohio. And so I found the catalog for Sound Vision, and I ordered the the tapes and the CDs and the books, and I used those, and especially for my little daughter, you know, that's how we basically learned our Islam and Islam entered our hearts through the wonderful works of, of Sound Vision. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, brother. I just want you to know that I love the Sound Vision website, that a lot of times when I'm looking for information, especially as it relates to homelessness, domestic violence, and women issues, I go to that website and then I see what you've written, and then I copy and paste it and spread the word because the wisdom is there, so I can't. You know, I can't do any better than what Sound Vision has already done. Sound Vision is our survival uh, uh, guide. It is the uh, organization that provides skills for Muslims how to survive and thrive in this uh, community here in the U.S. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Anam, I'm in 11th grade and I grew up with Adam's World and what it taught me was unity, respect and love for the Muslim Ummah. Is Adam's World is the greatest show ever made. Take me to the Kaaba, man. I love that puppet. Uh, I apologize for messed up. That's okay, no problem. So uh, we were continuing, uh, and we were talking about uh, potentially, you know, uh, your your faith or your gender or your age may be uh, potentially a barrier uh, initially when you were having a hard time, you know, sort of convincing your professors. So that's what we were sort of. That's where we left off. Yeah, uh, for for my master. Um, 
uh, the, the main reason was lack of knowledge because it was a very new area using artificial intelligence in medicine. So it was really not biased because of my minority situation. Uh, but but in business, when I started my startup and when I entered into business area, it's definitely because um, being an entrepreneurship as a female and Muslim uh, with hijab and uh, um, I don't shake hand with men. Uh, that That's a disaster uh, with lots of in meetings. And um, so, um, it, and uh, yeah, it, it was a huge ma minority. And then I become a mom as well, which is adding more and more challenges in my life uh, and limitation. Wow. But, uh, but then, um, I find in a one workshop that I ask um, a mentor that how can I explain if I don't want to shake hand because I have a religious restriction, but being a polite at the same time that said I don't I don't shake because I don't like you I don't shake because um, I'm in practice. Uh, so he said that don't apologize and make uh, your weakness as a strong point uh so you just gonna say that because before that i said i do mind if i don't you shake, shake your hand and they thought that maybe i'm sick i have like i have a sneeze or cough and my hand is dirty but after that he recommend me to strongly say that i don't shake hand and that was really game changer after that i have a very good confidence that i don't shake hand and they say oh okay that's it I never faced at that point any any problem after that, and and I proudly uh, like say that okay, I'm I'm gonna be a very bold because um, I'm one of uh, the really um, maybe five entrepreneur in uh, this area of medical uh, medical devices who have a hijab and female and Iranian, which is just make it worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So uh, I make myself bold. So whenever I go to any conferences, workshop or any pitch, they're gonna remember me, oh, that girl who has a hijab. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, that's interesting. And uh, I guess the um, recently your, uh, you know, the pandemic probably, a situation you know has made things a little easier when it comes to the issue of you know shaking hands has uh, become quite an automatic thing you don't need to worry about uh, most people are not shaking hands at this point anyway uh, but that's an interesting creative solution so um i mean one thing that's interesting that launched uh, they help you uh, launch your company uh, vital uh, tracer of course that we have talked about um is that you you know of course you invented your own product and now you are in a position to you know market it to hospitals and senior you know and uh, and uh, other medical uh, teams out there and of course senior homes and so on so uh recently uh, you know uh, you 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 were approaching the hospitals and senior homes as well in the quebec uh area for instance quebec province uh how how are you marketing this as a as a solution to a lot of problems that are, uh, especially during COVID-19, uh, in this, especially in the hospital industry. I mean, how are you marketing this um, as a device that every hospital should have, or even every every seniors seniors home should have? Uh, I should. I, I need to like have a one information backup that we are all right now selling only for the clinical trial researchers and academy and it's right now it's not available for selling the device for um, hospitals and seniors because to do that uh, we need to to do that we need to have a medical certification and we are in the process of submitting our application to health canada and fda mm -hmm. to be a medical device so as you can see in a, in a screen it this is the vt lab which is abbreviation of vital tracer for laboratory mm -hmm. this is device is available in a market to order for different academic and professors who wants to combine our device and vital signs in their own medical application. So we receive a lots of uh, lots of requests from the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Um, that um, different uh, professors got a different grant from government and wants to use a verbal device to combine due to for elderly, Alzheimer, cancer, asthma, apnea, sleep apnea, and lots of those uh, researchers. Wow. But, um, but this device is going to be ready by next year, September 21 for uh, hospitals and senior homes. So it's not ready for the end user, I can say right now. That's phenomenal. I mean, I read recently that you guys got a uh, over a million dollar uh, grant as well for a company to continue developing this product. And uh, we really wish you um, all the best with, uh, with your future endeavors, especially when, when hopefully uh, it goes through all the clinical trials and it gets the, uh, approval from Health Canada and US FDA as you're uh, aiming for. And once it does come out uh, in, in the market next year, um, it definitely is going to, inshallah, be a game changer and a, a, a product that is going to hopefully save lives and uh, and bring about a lot of comfort to especially those who are the most vulnerable in our society. Um, so kudos to you and your team. Um, I wanted to um, just go back now to your personal life. Uh, you you were born, you were originally from Iran, uh, you grew up in Dubai, and you came to Canada in 2008. Um, and then you decided to become a scientist and inventor. And now at the age of 34, you have accomplished so much. Um, tell us a little bit about your childhood and and your your life uh, anything interesting you want to share with us that may be of inspiration to others um my my life i, I when i was seven years old uh, i i i planned to be a famous scientist who can help who can innovate a device who can help lots of people like edison who innovate like power and lamps so I, I wished for that, uh, but uh, you know, lots of time uh, this dream goes back and forth uh, and, and change um, a bit. But uh, my father was uh, my um, life mentor all the time and he, he keep telling me focus, focus, focus on one thing, uh, you know, one very big dream and go forward. So I, I do remember when I study my bachelor at university for biomedical engineering, I had a plan to double major with electrical engineering and study one more year. And then I plan to triple my major to communication engineering as well to, to make it like six years. And then my dad said, no, focus, focus on only one major and go for it. Uh, when I came to Canada, I tried to get a, a master admission, but I couldn't for the first or second year. I tried so hard. So I, I decided to move to interior design. And my dad was like, I didn't pay five years for your study to go to study interior design. Focus. So I, I, I finally got um, admission for my master. And then um, that was really changing my life. Wow. I mean, it's very rare. Um you know, that, uh, you know, I mean, not just in our community, but in our society that women in particular are, are sort of pushed to become scientists or engineers. Uh, and, and even though they have so much potential, there's so many brilliant uh, scientists, engineers, uh, people in technical fields out there uh, who happen to be women and they're leaders. Unfortunately, there are a lot of barriers and some of those barriers you're facing now, of course. So, how has your life changed ever since you, um, you know, had a, a, a beautiful baby girl and uh, you are a mother now? Um, how has any of your professional life, if anything, changed? Uh, are there any challenges you're facing or has it taught you something probably new that is probably helping you in your, in your work and in your, in your profession? Yeah, even before that, in 2014, my dad diagnosed with the stomach cancer and uh, it was stage three. So they have to remove the, the total cancer, uh, the total stomach. And he fight for two years and then he passed away in 2017. So at that time, I got a really lost, like my best friend, my 
best life mentor and I lost my dad. I was the only daughter in, in um, our family. So it was a really big tragedy and uh, I almost like give it up of everything. And I even, I do remember that I studied PhD because that was one of his dream. So in Middle East, I can kind of disagree with you that all the dads wants their uh, child become a medical doctor, a lawyer or engineer. It's very typical. So I was kind of having those that who wants to go and study engineer. It's going to be good for you. So anyways, um, it was a very big tragedy for me in 2000, um, these, these years. But um, all the, my, my family is super supportive. So I do remember my elder brother give it, um, he changed, he quit his job and joined the, my startup to help me to make it possible. So I got a, like a year off from our company to, to recover for my more mental health that I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I, I decided to, to have a child and I had even high risk pregnancy. It was a horrible life experience, I can say. Um, but, uh, but thanks God, um, um, everything goes very well, especially that do remember that I even got a depression after delivery, but I asked my co-founder to, to come to our home every day to work even harder. So after that, we start like to recover that depression. I start to working more harder and I asked my mother and after that, my mother-in-law to come and help me to, to manage my child and my life. Uh, balance versus my work and I really appreciate their time and their help as well and um, yeah wow. that's thank you for sharing first of all all this uh, I mean and, and and sorry to hear about this tragic loss of your father who was of course your your mentor and the one who really pushed you to be where you, where you are and really we all need such um, uh, you know, inspirational figures in our lives, like uh, what you know your own father was, uh, and may God have mercy on his soul. And um, and it's it's really interesting to hear the the level of support that you got from your own family. Um, and really, that's what it takes for us to get to where you we are today. Sometimes it's really um, the the kind of support we get from our loved ones helps us to you know achieve such monumental success so um uh, you know great to hear all this um a very inspirational story of your life and your family and your success story of course so um as we you know come to a conclusion in the next few minutes a few questions i wanted to ask you um about your uh you know uh, some advice that you can uh, share with uh, with, with the audience and, and specifically people who may be in a similar situation as you. Um, you have, you are an entrepreneur now, of course, you have struggled the last 10 years, you have researched, you've gone through a lot of work. Uh, you know, tell, tell us, uh, when I say us at this point, tell, share with us, with, with us any advice you may have uh, for young graduates or soon to be graduates, uh, perhaps female, could be male, who have creative minds, who are entrepreneurial, and they have some idea, but they may not believe in it maybe yet. Maybe somebody else, their professor or somebody else doesn't believe, an investor doesn't believe in them yet, um, but they have a potential to change the world. What advice would you give such individuals who have a good potential ahead of them? Uh, yeah, um, it's, um, you don't, you just need to believe in yourself and make sure if you are really believe that this is good, it's possible and it's, it is, you can make it just, just have it enough self-esteem and also believe in God, God willings as well and, uh, make tawakul and go ahead. Um, don't listen to others at all. Uh, I, I don't listen to anyone except my father who believed in me. And uh, I, I showed lots of people 
lots of leaders in this area that this is it is possible to to have a revolution revolutionized technology different than traditional technology and the other things that i recommend everyone to take care is um mental health so make sure that you are you do take care of yourself not only physically but of course the mentally if you feel uh, depression or anxiety like all the time go and take care of yourself for sure wow thank you very much that's that's very good advice thank you um also uh you mentioned you know a couple times you felt like giving up uh, and it, it could be because of the depression that you were going through after uh, passing with your dad or even after your, you know, giving birth. But what kept you going and what keeps you going today, every day, wake up in the morning? What are some of the things you tell yourself every morning or every night to keep you going and keep doing what you keep doing uh, for the past 10 years? Is like the challenge is that uh, I love when the people don't believe in me and I love to make it proof that you're wrong <laughs> that's one of the main um, one of the main motivation that I can want to show people that you can be a minority group as a female women Muslim with hijab with lots of putting yourself in restriction um, and uh, but you believe that this is gonna be happening. And I do believe in the culture of our company that we do see, we do prefer to hire females, mothers, people who have a hijab. And we don't care that different peoples or mentors gonna say that you don't have that much diversity. I don't care. I don't need that diversity. I want the people who is super smart. We have a lot of super smart, super mom, in our community that I know them and I trust them and I keep asking them if you need if you are looking for a job just just call me and I would love to like have a female startup who is doing deep technology in business and being a successful wow that's powerful and um well no that's that's amazing and uh, so you know we talked about motivation um are there is there anything else you want to share about your company itself? Um, you know, that, I mean, you already talked quite a bit about, but if people want to hear, learn more about your organization or your company and your product, uh, what's the best way for them to learn about it? Uh, we have a, a subscription. Um, we are taking in our website. You can go and subscribe uh, our newsletter. We are going to make a newsletter from next month, not October, probably November. I mean, uh, by and then we are going to update our technology, anything relevant to wearable devices, and anything relevant to our company. And we are going to open our uh, first round as a seed fund on January 21. So if there is like any potential investors, we're gonna open our round by then. Okay, that's awesome. Um, well, I think uh, that was that was uh, it for today. We have uh, we learned quite a bit about your life, your uh, your motivation your inspiration, your source of inspiration, and of course, your very inspiring work um, and your invention and inshallah, lots of inventions to come in the near future with all the bright moms and mother and, uh, and ladies that you're working with. Um, we wish you all the best in the, in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, inshallah. Um, with that, um, wanted to thank you, Azade, for being here with us, spending uh, you know, this afternoon with us and inspiring myself and all of us uh, with your story of uh, of your hard work and uh, and grit and your intelligence. Thank you very much, Brother Taha, for having me today. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, that's uh, that's it, folks. Today for today, we just learned from a young, brilliant mother who happens to be a PhD students, who happens to be an inventor, who has happens to be a scientist, who decided to become a scientist at the age of seven. Um, you heard her story. 
um, and her struggles. Um, and today she has a groundbreaking technology that you know is on its way to become uh, a medical device that could be used and maybe you will be used uh, hopefully um, in, in our hospital systems, in our senior homes and has a great potential to save lives, especially given the pandemic situation that uh, unfortunately we are all uh, bracing and weathering over the past uh, few months. So uh, we want to thank Azade for being here with us and we want to thank all our audience for tuning in and for listening to this conversation. And um, and also want to thank our uh, production team, uh, Saliha, uh, Farooq, as well as Aisha Malik uh, for producing this show as usual. And of course, to Dawanet, grateful, we are grateful to Dawanet and Tronomson.com for their community partnership. Uh, once again, this is Taha Ghayur on Muslim Network TV, bringing you Canada Today Show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.